Welcome to this video from the electrochemistry topic. Welcome to this video from the electrochemistry topic and our subject today is calculating cell potential. So if you haven't if you don't know what an electrochemical cell is, you'll be um, well advised to watch the previous video. Um, but as long as you understand what the components of an electrochemical cell are, we're now going to look at how we calculate the cell potential. So this was the uh, zinc copper cell we looked at last time and what we have in the zinc copper cell is uh, a zinc electrode here and we've got a zinc 2 plus solution here and they are going to be in equilibrium and we can work out by using the standard hydrogen electrode that the standard electrode potential for the zinc zinc 2 plus half cell is minus 0 0.76 volts. We also have connected to that a copper 2 plus copper half cell, so this would be copper 2 plus, and in that case the standard electrode potential was plus 0.34 volts. And so in order to actually measure the cell potential we need to use a very high resistance voltmeter and what that is basically going to do is to calculate a snapshot of the difference in electron concentration on these two pieces of metal. That's essentially what it's doing, it's calculating a potential difference. Um, and providing that's a high resistance voltmeter, that potential difference is as big as it possibly can be and it's known as the cell electromotive force or EMF. So we can write that as E cell and providing we're working under standard conditions then we can use the standard symbol so E standard cell. Well how are we actually going to work that out? There's essentially now two stages to working out um, the cell potential and the first stage is to work out what is the positive pole and what is the negative pole in the cell and we do that just by looking at the standard electrode potentials. So we can see here that the copper is going to be the more positive electrode here because its standard electrode potential is more positive and the zinc therefore becomes the negative pole. So there's a potential difference between these two. This one here is at plus 0.34 so that's where the positive pole is and the negative pole is down at a potential of minus 0.76 volts. Now what's the difference between them essentially? How much do you have to gain in order to go from the negative to positive? Um, if an electron were to move from negative to positive or rather if one coulomb of charge were to move between negative and positive how much energy would it gain in so doing? Um, sorry, how much energy would it lose in so doing? Um, which is transferred to become some electrical work or so forth that it can do. Um, and the answer here is going to be plus 1.10 volts. So essentially if we're going to calculate that we need to do the positive standard electrode potential subtract the negative standard electrode potential which in this case is 0 0.34 subtract minus 0.76 which is 1.1 volts and it's important to conserve decimal places when we're adding or subtracting. So there's how you calculate the cell potential. I've just got another example for you to try here. So this is a zinc carbon cell. So pause the video now and see if you can calculate the cell potential. Well, let's see how you got on. So first step in this was deciding which is the positive and which is the negative electrode. So here this is the standard, this standard electrode potential is more positive. So this uh, electrode involving manganese will be the more positive and the zinc will be the negative. And so if we want to work out our standard electrode potential, E standard cell is just going to be the positive subtract the negative and so that's going to be 0 0.5 minus minus 0 0.76 
which gives us a 1.26 volt cell potential.